Hey there guys and welcome back to NIMBY Rails. I'm going to take a look at the different signals in the 1.2 beta today. I've set up some sort of short track sections to mess about with. I can't actually put roots on them because, well, they, they don't go anywhere. But it, it will demonstrate how you would set up signals on different layouts. So we'll start with the one at the top, a, a single track station. But basically, a lot of these have been built based on parts of my map that I was rebuilding last night so this for example is uh, reminiscent of a stretch into Beckenham Junction so if we look at signals for a single track station I'd still keep using the simple block signal if I put it down and put a Belize at the exit and then I select the signal there we go got there eventually you can see it, it highlights the entire block only one train can be on that blue section at a time that works fine if, however, I was to add in, and then this makes it more like Beckenham Junction. Um, no, don't do that. There's another two tracks there, and a switch across from there up to up here. This would need a different layout of signals, because you don't want to have that entire line that's... Uh, hang on a second, build blueprints. You don't have the entire line that's blue now. Um, highlight... Uh, occupied when there's a train coming into this platform so if I were to change this to a path signal instead and were to have another path signal here and here and then a belief at the exit on this line you can change the path signals so they limit paths in certain directions at the moment this only limits paths for paths going in the same direction as it so if I select this signal, you can see the path goes through it. I don't want that, I want it to be always. So the path ends there, because that path shouldn't really be used. And likewise, I want to do that with this signal. However, I want this signal at the exit of the station to stay as only for the same direction, so that when this signal is green, or this signal is only green if the route to the station and also the station is empty. This... I mean, it no longer needs this short stretch to be empty, unoccupied, for the path signal to go green, but that's okay, because that's not really affecting it. And so that ends up working out better, in a way. Um, moving on to the next, the next layout, we've got a single track section with double track either side. This could be set up in two ways. Um, I think in this situation, it, again, it depends on whether there's a junction or not. As there's no junction in the middle, I think I'd prefer to have the block signal in, just because it works slightly more accurately to real life. There's nothing stopping you using path signals, provided they are set to uh, always rather than only for the same direction. If I just change that, there we go. That works just as well, but I I don't see any reason not to just use the simple block for this. So the, the next layout is a, a standard just set of points on a double track line. This one you would use path signals. Uh, I'm just trying to remember where the points actually start, I think it is here. So we'll have a signal there, a signal there, and a signal there. And then again you need releases at the exits. So there we go. And once again, the benefit of this is now, previously, and actually I can demonstrate, if I set this to simple block, this would all be one block. So you could only have one train on the junction at a time, which doesn't allow parallel moves on the same direction, either uh, straight ahead or curved, nor does it allow some, a train coming in from the curve and a train going out across the straight. So now we use path signals instead and it only interrupts the straight across this only interrupts the one path it's using and this only interrupts the curve which means trains can run a lot more reliably across the junction I might see if I've got that implemented somewhere on my map to show off later because I think that could be quite cool to show in, in operation um, and then a similar concept can be used for actual 
normal diamond crossovers if I just put the signals in and the releases. There we go. Um, it doesn't really need a lot of explanation. <laughs> the, the, the same is true. It only interrupts its route. And then we move on to the last one. So, again, path signals. In the grand scheme of things, there are very few cases you'd want to use... Well, I, in fact, I can't think of any case where you have to use a block signal instead of a path signal. I think in any case you could use a block signal, a path signal would also work. But there are cases where you could use just a block signal instead of a path signal. So I've, I've set the signals up, I've got uh, one path signal at the entrance, which goes into all platforms and is set to always rather than only the same direction, and one at the exit of each platform that allows routing both ways out, but is blocked by this signal. As you can see, there we go. Um, the other thing you'd also obviously want to do is set up some arrows, some directional signals, just so that the routes actually work. So, yeah, typically path signals are all you need. You don't need too many. Um, as I've been told numerous times in the comments since my last tutorial, the the releases do serve a purpose. Um, the it basically plain line running still works how it does in version 1.1, the the main release, in that a train will stop if there is another train in front of it. So you don't need to signal the entire line. You could. There's nothing stopping you. Again, you could use either block signals or path signals, or you could only use block signals if there was no points, but. It, it, yeah, if, it, if it's straight plane line, you could use block signals. Otherwise, have to use path signals. Uh, and, so, and you could certainly signal the entire line if you wished to. But there's definitely no need to. Um, because you can use the block release to get back onto just plane line running. And then the next signal at the next junction. So I'll just hop over into my other world quickly. So here we are in the in my rebuild of the UK network in 1.2. Um, I I did actually record this. It's not gone out yet at this point. It's going out next week. But I did record the construction of the Northern Line and putting the services on it along with the signals. So I can look, for example, at if I turn on the track reservations overlay, which has not shown me a great deal. Morden is not the best example, honestly. Um, I think if I go to, say, Kennington, I think has quite good. Just because of the number of signals going on. You can see the yellow line is where a route has been reserved for a train. Or, in fact, even better is how the Waterloo and City line works with its terminating. It's a bit underneath the other platform labels, but... You can kind of grasp what's going on, and a train will come into the siding reverse and go back out again into the other platform. Camden Town's a little awkward to see what's going on with the junction, just because it's all overlaid on top of each other, but you can kind of get an idea. Um, quite often trains will come down both Northern Line branches at the same time and not interfere with each other. And you do get to see northbound trains tend to get held at the signal here. I reckon this one will be held. Yeah, there we go. You can see the signal does turn red. That's, the, that's my only gripe with path signals is that their default aspect is yellow. Not green. Which I guess is in a way to differ it from a block signal. Although the block signals are also different shapes. So, you can see that kind of how it works at Golders Green. The uh, thing is, actually with the Northern Line, there's not a lot of interference going on with the different routes. Uh, it sort of happens up at the terminus here. Um, you'll see in a second as a train starts coming up to Edgeware. Where is it? It's down at Burnt Oak. Okay, it's going to take a bit of time to get up here. Well, one train has left now, so that's something. Here we go, it's on its way. See the route is reserved at the bottom. 
and it's here, and it wants to go into the other platform that's currently occupied, so it's being held. And shortly that train should leave. There we go. And now this one can come in. And the next one can come in, into the other platform. And it's only held as long as its route is occupied. So... If we wait for the next cycle again, it should be shortly. And then... Is it, is it going to happen? <laughs> Here we go. And then I want to slow it down. So keep an eye on at what point this train starts moving. Because you'd have originally thought it to be when this train is maybe past that signal. If we were using block signals. Or if these, if we were using block signals we possibly wouldn't have those signals. And only one platform would be able to be occupied at a time. But it starts moving already. As soon as it cleared this set of points, it starts moving. I'll go have a look at High Barnet, which actually works very similarly. It's only two platforms instead of three, but we're still using both of them. And obviously the Northern Line also has a stretch of single track, which isn't exactly op um, operated in a complex manner, because there's only one train that uses it, shuttling back and forth. But it's still a single track stretch. So that's kind of demonstrates how the signals work in action. Um, and as you can see, say through the centre of the city, there is no signals. Uh, they start appearing again at Camden Town, then there's the police at the exit of the junction, and then there's nothing again all the way up to, well, probably Golders Green, I think. Yeah. They start just at the exit of the yard from Golders Green. The other things you can do now, you can overlap depots. <laughs> you can put depots right next to each other to get multiple lines into them. And you can put them near stations again. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> it allows you to be a bit more accurate with them. It's like this awkwardly large gap at either side, but it's a lot better than it was. So, hopefully this signaling tutorial has been helpful. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.